to follow Bishop Charles Ajinasari on Facebook. Simply log on to facebook.com slash bishopcharlesajinasari. And yes, welcome to his page. Kindly look out for the blue verification tick next to his name to ensure you are on his official Facebook page. View pictures, watch posted and live videos, read his comments, and leave your comments. Join over 500,000 followers all around the world just by liking his Facebook page at Bishop Charles Ajin Asari. There are some of us, when they transfer us from Accra, we quit the job. There are some of us, even as pastors, and I know a lot of pastors watch me and hear me, because in the days we live in, we have a lot of pastors in the cities. And in the cities, there's a lot of confusion. We are having pastors removing women's panties in church and praying for them. We have pastors putting their hands on women's weightier matters and praying for them. Some are anointing women's something. Pastors anointing the teeth of women's breasts. And you see the <laughs> religious ministry must help us. I think that we must come to a time where the Catholic Secretariat, Christian Council, Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, National Association of Christian and Charismatic Churches are given the right that if anybody wants to start a church, we should vet the person as to doctrine and practices. Amen? Because if we don't, very soon we are going to have a Jim Jones. Because if women pastors are buffing men at midnight, what happens if these men rape them? There are pastors in other places who are giving insecticides to people to drink. Some are giving them snakes and cockroaches to eat. Some are stamping on the bellies of women. And we are saying that freedom of worship. And we are allowing it. One of these days, if we are not careful, something will happen and we shouldn't be blamed. Amen? Because we can't just under the name of prophetic acts be allowing everything. There are pastors giving people debtor to drink, toilet detergent to drink. When you go on social media, you see all kinds of things. <laughs> and it doesn't happen in the villages. So it happens in the cities. Because most of those pastors will not be willing to go to the village to go to a place where they will make a sacrifice. Today, you hear some pastors preach. They are talking about the number of cars God has given to them. Cars? When souls are perishing? We are not boasting about Christ. We are not boasting about how many souls we are winning, about how many churches we are planting, about how many lives are being transformed and healed and delivered by the power of the Holy Ghost. We, we are losing the touch of sacrifice. Unfortunately, there are church members who've made themselves so gullible. If you are a woman and a pastor is saying, remove your panties, and then you too, you, when you go Google it, you see it. It's, it's there in Ghana here. It didn't happen in uh, somewhere. Uh, uh, it happened in Ghana here. Whether it's private or public, no pastor. It's allowed to ask you to remove your panties. He's not a medical doctor. He's not a gynecologist to be examining you. Even the male gynecologists, they don't examine you alone. They always make sure there's another nurse there. Amen? <laughs> uh, give the Lord praise. Give him praise. Beloved, when we give up something for the ministry, power is released. Power is released. <laughs> well, 
Uh, let's look at a few forms of sacrifice. Amen. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Every, every, almost every profession makes sacrifices. Every profession. Missionaries, they leave the comfort of their home. They go to a new place to go and be a blessing. They leave the comfort of their homes. One of the greatest Pentecostal churches we have in Ghana is the Church of Pentecost. It was started by Apostle James McKeon. He left the comforts of Europe and came to live here with us. He had to learn how to eat and cut in coin and ebunebun and eat akple so that he could bring the gospel to us. And I'm looking at the time when God will raise missionaries from amongst us. Oh, uh, I thought you say amen. amen. To take the gospel to other parts of the world. But missionaries make sacrifices. They make sacrifices. Pastors. Pastors make sacrifices. I'm talking about true pastors. I'm not talking about pastors who are making people remove their panties. <laughs> I'm talking about true pastors. They deal with the problems of people. A lot of the times they are even criticized. <laughs> there are times they have to be there at the time of emergencies of people. And most times, some of the people don't even appreciate what they are doing. There are a lot of pastors who at the expense of their families are ministering to the needs of the people. And then when they finish, they will be accused of chopping people's money. I don't know any profession in this world that doesn't chop people's money. The lawyer profits at the expense of the man who has a problem. We don't have, a, we don't have a, a, an issue with it. Because the man has a problem, he takes a lawyer, they will charge him consultation or, or consulting fees, etc. Legal fees, etc. There is no problem. Somebody is sick, the doctor will charge him at the expense of the person's sickness. We don't have a problem. The pastor takes an offering and he eats from the tithes. Say a kind. kind. But you see, the truth of the matter is most pastors die a thousand deaths before they choose to live by tithes and offerings. Because normally most of the pastors that God uses they all have to be doing something before he takes them. If you like, check your Bible. God never chooses anybody who is not doing anything. God doesn't use lazy people. Tell somebody God doesn't use lazy people. Amos, the people were arguing with Amos. And Amos said, look, I was not a prophet. Neither was I a prophet's son. I was a farmer. And God chose me. Peter was fishing. And Jesus called him. Matthew was the revenue office and the customs office and Jesus called him. Paul was a lawyer and God called him. Luke was a medical doctor and God called him. Everybody God ever used was doing something with their lives. God doesn't use lazy people. He doesn't use lazy people. The ministry is not a place for lazy people. Tell somebody the ministry is not a place for lazy people. Amen. You know, you know how Harvard University started? Harvard University started because Mr. Harvard said he would not tolerate it that we will put ignorant people in the pulpit. That is how Harvard University started. Harvard University started as a school for the training of pastors to preach the unadulterated word of God. Most of the top league schools, the Ivy League schools in America and Europe, including Oxford and Cambridge and Princeton and, 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 and Yale. And I've been, I've gone to visit a number of them. Read their histories. There were seminaries. There were places for the training of pastors. And then it got to a time when money got in there, it changed. And today, some of them don't even have a place for God anymore. But beloved, the truth of the matter is, God has no place for lazy people in the ministry. Give them praise. Give them thanks. Give them praise. Give them thanks. But in every profession, and we don't have a problem when people choose to be doctors and nurses. <laughs> Amen. And doctors and nurses make sacrifices. 
Because they come, they, I mean, the needle come. I remember the other day when my son, Dr. Selassie, was preaching. He spoke about the day when they, they, he was treating an HIV patient and the, the needle pricked him. You know, the, the needle he had used for the HIV patient pricked him. And I mean, when that happens, you have to take a certain kind of medication. And that medication beats you. It's like you have been beaten. And you have to take it for a number of weeks. And doctors are at risk doing that. Nurses are at risk doing that. Every profession has a sacrifice it makes. Immigrants, when you see some of our immigrants, they travel on the Sahara Desert because they want greener passage. Everything you want to do in this life has some form, if it's a good one, has some form of sacrifice. Some go by boat, some die, some store away in containers. Yet they are willing to make that sacrifice. Pilots and ship captains, <laughs> they can be captured. And when there is a problem with the ship or the plane, they are supposed to be the last to leave. Yet people are willing to pay to take their children to become pilots and to become captains of ships. I remember a few years ago, in 2012, Francis Chetino, captain of the cruise ship Costa Concordia, was arrested for abandoning ship before everyone else because the ship was carrying 4,500 people and the ship costed 400 million pounds. Six people died and 29 people were unaccounted for. He was jailed. Amen. Yet people still sponsor their children to go and do that. Listen to me, beloved. Bankers, accountants, and lawyers, they get home late. Some of them work in the office and get home very late. But they make that sacrifice. And the families, are, they are happy to send them to do that. But when people want to come into the ministry, People want to become pastors. Then their parents are crying. Oh, I've sent you to school all these years. It's what you want to be. Now you are in your 20s. Now you are in your 30s. Now you are in your 40s. Now you are in your 50s. Now you are in your 60s. Now you are in your 70s. Now you are in your 80s. Now you are in your 90s. Now you are in your 100s. Now you are in your 100s. Now you are in your 100s. Trying to make money. They do. Soldiers and policemen. I remember when I went to one of the regions recently to preach. The police boss. He said, do you know that now I can't even send my men to go out? Because the other time, some of my men were standing on the road. They tried to flag this vehicle that was passing and the driver just ran over the policeman. He said, so I, my men are not safe. He said, armed robbers have attacked some of my men and killed two. So my men, when I'm deploying them, nobody wants to go. Even that, people are willing to take their children to police and to soldier. Give them praise. Give them thanks. If you've been watching the journalists, journalists, there are times they will beat them. They go to cover even in our local place. Yeah, they will be covering political parties. And some of them, they will break their nose. They will break their camera. They will beat them. Yet the next time they will be there, they want to make the sacrifice so that it can be done. Politicians risk being criticized for stealing people's money. And the sad part is that they themselves have been accusing one another that they have been stealing. It's politicians. They'll come and tell us how this, you, you stole. <laughs> so, we, 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 we all are beginning to think that politicians are thieves because they told us that. We didn't know. We are not politicians. Amen? I think that there should be some sense of decorum in the way they accuse one another. <laughs> but the sad part is that it tags their children. Once you, a child says, my father is a politician, they say, ah, they chop people's money, stealing our money. 
Yet many people want to still be politicians. What am I saying? I'm saying that, beloved, it is time everything we do in this life, there's some form of sacrifice. It is time God had some people who will make sacrifices for the kingdom of God to be preached like never before. Give them praise. Give them thanks. Give them praise. Give them thanks. Give them praise. Give them thanks. Psalm 91 verse 14, he says, Because he set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver and honor him. God says, I will set him on high. I will deliver him. Because he's sacrificial, I will deliver him. How much are you willing to sacrifice? Ask the person sitting by you, how much are you willing to sacrifice? Ah, uh, if you are sitting by your spouse, don't love shit. Apostle Ray was love with the wife. <laughs> Say, how did I know I was looking in my, in my sermon? We need, <laughs> we need more people to commit to the cause of Christ. We need people who can do more than they are doing today. Tell somebody we need people who can do more than they are doing today. Beloved, so many people can do more. But they are not. By the time we finish this month, may you do more for the kingdom of God. Tell somebody, may you do more for the kingdom of God. Amen. At this point in the life of the church, in, I mean worldwide, I'm not talking about Perez Chapel. As for Perez Chapel, by the grace of God, we talk about sacrifice small. Amen? But the body of Christ as a whole, we've come to a place that we need people to sacrifice like never before. And it is good that we pledge ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, because our sacrifice is what brings us a turnaround. Our sacrifice is what gets God, God's attention. In our lives, may we secure his attention like never before. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. The purpose of your sacrifice is not just for material returns. Tell somebody the purpose of your sacrifice is not just for material returns. In the past few days, I've talked about the blessings of sacrifice. And I thank God for the testimony that person shared. He said 20 years, they owed him 20 years, him or her 20 years. And she decided to sacrifice. And then suddenly the person has come to pay. Give God praise. Give God praise. When everything else fails, try sacrifice. But beloved, sacrifice is not just for material returns. In Psalm 20, verse 1 to 3, he says, The Lord hear you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. Send you help from the sanctuary. Strengthen you out of Zion. Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. You need the defense of God. In your going out and coming in, you need the protection of God. May God protect you. May God look at your sacrifice and protect you. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Because your sacrifice is what guarantees a wall of defense around you. When many people are complaining, it will be minus you. Because you have sacrificed and the wall of defense has come around you. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him thanks. A thousand shall go down at your right hand. Ten thousand on the other side. It will not come nigh your dwelling. Why? Because you have been sacrificing to the Lord. And when God decides to bless you, it is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich. Amen? It is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich. And he adds no sacrifice. And sacrifice is one of the sure ways to empower you financially. So, you must learn to raise an altar of sacrifice. Either in your time, your talent, or with your treasures. Tell somebody, learn to raise an altar of sacrifice. Either with your time, your talent, or your treasures. Oh, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. David said, God forbid that I should offer God a sacrifice that cost me nothing. David said, it must cost me. 
What is your Christianity costing you? What is your Christianity costing you? If your Christianity is just making you comfortable, you are not walking in sacrifice. You are not denying yourself. Amen? <laughs> and this month, my prayer has been that God, anybody who has sacrificed anything, may you reward them. Ah, you didn't hear me. I said, I have been praying for you that God, anyone who offers a sacrifice or who has been sacrificing this month, reward them. Amen. Amen. If you have been sacrificing your time, if you've given your talent to support the work of God, if you've been giving your treasures to support the work of God, may God honor you. Amen. May God honor you. But whatever sacrifice you are giving unto God, it must cost you. But when it costs you, it must, you must be delightful. It must be a delightsome sacrifice. Don't ever see any sacrifice as compulsion. If you see it as compulsion, it can be an odor of a sweet smell. If it's going to be a sacrifice that is well pleasing unto God, it must not be forced out of you. It must be freely you have done that. Freely you have sacrificed. See it as a privilege. When we talk about sacrifice, see it as a privilege and not as a burden. Tell somebody, see sacrifice as a privilege. Amen. Because it's only the power of sacrifice that can deliver you from attack. In 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 10. 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 10. The Bible tells us, And Samuel was offering up the burnt offering. The Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them and they were smitten before Israel. The enemy was coming against Israel. And Samuel offered a sacrifice unto the Lord. The attack ceased. For some of you, this is your month that every satanic attack against your life is going to cease. Hey, I said this month, so for some of you, every satanic attack against your life is going to cease. Because your sacrifice will speak unto God. Tell somebody your sacrifice will speak unto God. <laughs> you know, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, God told Samuel to go and anoint David as king. And when Samuel was going, he said, God, if Saul, King Saul, hears about this, he will kill me. And God said, when Saul asks you, why did you go to do that? Tell him, I, why are you going? I'm going to offer a sacrifice unto God. What God was trying to tell Saul, or uh, Samuel was that, Samuel, your sacrifice will bring a protection against the king's anger for you. This month, may every sacrifice you have made in, this, in the kingdom of God, may that sacrifice bring a wall of protection against every plan of the enemy against your life. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him thanks. There are some of you, there is an agreement of witches and wizards concerning your life. Some of you, they have contracted you to die before your time. Some of you, there is an agreement in the pit of hell, a covenant. Some of them, those covenants have been cut in blood. There are people who don't like you. There are people, and, and don't, don't deceive yourself. Not everybody likes you. Not even all your relatives love you. Not all your friends like you. There are some who will be laughing with you and the next minute they are saying, crucify him, crucify him. Don't deceive yourself. Oh, our, our, our elders say that Abwe Bibakawa no ofi untumem. I like the way former President Rollins says it. He says, Abwe Bibakawa no fra untuma. If any insect is going to bite you, it should be your cloth. He says it, if any insect is going to bite you, he must be wearing your cloth. It is the same thing. That means that your enemies are closer to you than you ever think. And there are some of them, they are wishing you evil. There are some of them, they are laughing with you, but they are lying. Even though they are laughing with you, they look at your success, they don't like it. They don't like your breakthrough. They don't like your favor. They don't like your open door. And some of them are making all kinds of contracts and agreements and covenants and invocations and incantations and they are sprinkling things and they are blowing powder and all kinds of things but your sacrifice will avert every death anybody with a contract on your life 
for premature death by the blood of the Lamb. I cancel it in the name of Jesus. You will not die before your time. You will not suffer premature death. You will live and not die to declare the works of God. Give Him praise. Give Him thanks. Give Him praise. Give Him thanks. Give Him praise. Give Him thanks. That is why you must make up your mind to live a life of sacrifice. Amen? To do that, you need to ask God to break the power of mammon in your life. The love of money. The love of money is, is mammon. Worshipping money. The love of money. There are some of you, when God even ministers to you to give something, it becomes difficult because you love money. You love your treasures. It is God you must love, not your treasure. Give Him praise. Give Him thanks. Give Him praise. Give Him thanks. Time will not permit me to show you every major Bible character was a character of sacrifice. From righteous Abel in Genesis chapter 4 to righteous Noah, Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 to Abraham, Genesis 22 verse 9, Jacob, Genesis 28 verse 18 and chapter 46 verse 1, Samuel, Moses, David, Solomon, every major person God ever used was a man of sacrifice. Deborah, before Deborah would go to war with Barak, she offered a sacrifice unto God. Check your Bible. Every major person God has ever used was a man or a woman of sacrifice. Things happen on the altar of sacrifice. Amen? I said things happen on the altar of sacrifice. As I conclude this month of sacrifice, may you live and walk a life of sacrifice. Bow down your head. Let us pray. You are here with me. Jesus gave us the ultimate sacrifice. He went to the cross. He died for you and me. You are here today. You want your sins forgiven. You are here today, you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. If you are like that, lift up one hand, I'm going to pray with you. You want your sins forgiven? Yes, thank you. You want your sins forgiven? Yes, thank you. Lift up your hand. Thank you, thank you. You backslided. You want to come back to the Lord. You fell into sin. You want to come back to the Lord. Lift up your hand. I'm going to pray with you. Thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you. If your hand is lifted, please stand. Will you take your Bible, your bag, your purse? Take your Bible, your bag, your purse. Walk to me in front here. You want your sins forgiven. Take your Bible, your bag, your purse. Walk to me in front here. Take your Bible, your bag, your purse. Walk to me in front here. You want your sins forgiven. I want to pray with you. You want your sins forgiven. I surrender Want your sins forgiven? Take your Bible, your bag, your pen. Walk to me in front here. Will you please lift up one hand? And pray this prayer with me. Church, lift up your hand. Pray this prayer with me. If you are listening to me by radio, watching by television, Facebook, Periscope, whatever means you are watching me, pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear God, Dear God, forgive me all my sins. Lord Jesus. You died for me. You rose for me. Come into my life. Make my life a testimony. To those who know me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For answered prayer. In Jesus' name. Put your hand on your chest. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I commit these dear ones to you. I pray they will know you and know you better. Establish them in your house. Make them a testimony to your praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.